90% of the most popular videos on YouTube have custom thumbnails, and this is too big of a statistic just to be chance. In my most popular video on this channel, How to Grow from 0 to 1000 Subscribers, I talked about custom thumbnails and I rated them the third most important factor when growing a gaming channel. But we never really looked at how to actually improve your thumbnails. What makes a good thumbnail? How do you make a good thumbnail? In this video, I'm going to go over that in detail, so stay tuned. G'day, my name's Marcus, I'm a video game and YouTube enthusiast, and this channel is all about helping you grow your gaming channel. Surprise! I upload once a week, so feel free to subscribe if you want to grow your gaming channel. Now disclaimer, we're going to be covering a lot in this video, and I am actually under a little bit of time pressure, but I still wanted to get a video out for you guys, so I apologise if this seems a little rushed. We'll be covering a whole ton of great value stuff, but before we do that, let's play the clip from the video How to Grow from 0 to 1000 Subscribers in 2019, for those of you who haven't seen that video. Next tip, thumbnails. Thumbnails are extremely important. In fact, having a good thumbnail is one of the most important things, I think, for a video. People look at the thumbnails first before they look at anything else. Whether your video is going out to people through the YouTube algorithm, through the search, through you generally promoting them, or just people clicking on your channel to have a look, they need people to actually click on them. Now, obviously having good titles and descriptions is gonna help with that, but people look at the thumbnails first. Now, tips to make good thumbnails. You want them to be relevant. No one wants to see a new Funny Moments video with a meme on the thumbnail that's like six years old, unless that's part of the joke. <laughs> you want your thumbnails to be bright because that way they're gonna stand out a little bit more. Now, I'll give you a little tidbit. Yellow is the first color registered by the human eye, which is one of the reasons a lot of YouTubers will use that orangey yellow text for their clickbaity thumbnails. <laughs> Now, one of the ways I like to check to make sure my thumbnails are easily viewable is what I call the magnifying test or the upside down magnifying test. On Photoshop or whatever program I'm using to create my thumbnail, I zoom all the way out until the thumbnail is on the screen at about the size it would be if it's showing up as a recommended video. The things I want to stand out really pop at that distance, then I know it's a good thumbnail. Tell a story, basically ethical clickbait. You want to entice people by kind of showing them something they might not have seen before or that they might be interested in watching. Most of the time, people make decisions based on emotions. You're going to have a very hard time selling a video that has a thumbnail with two words on it, funny moments and then a black screen because it doesn't really have any emotion. It doesn't tell a story. Now, telling a story is one of the reasons why clickbait has gone so viral. And that's why I say ethical clickbait. Don't tell a story that's not actually in your video because then you're going to lose trust. You don't want to have hundreds of people clicking on your video only to have them click off in the first 20 seconds that actually brings your video down in YouTube's opinion. So that's all well and good, but let's look at how to improve our thumbnails or how to even come up with good thumbnails in this to start with. So if you already have a thumbnail style, then you might want to skip this step. But for most of you, you're still experimenting around figuring out the thumbnail style that works best for you. If you're struggling to come up with a style of thumbnail for your videos that works, try looking at the other popular creators in your niche and seeing what their styles they're using. Obviously, they've already shown that this style works. They've tried and tested it for you. So even though there may be a better style out there if you're willing to experiment and come up with it, these bigger channels are already living case studies for you to view. So while browsing through these channels and trying to come up with ideas for your channel and what thumbnails you're gonna use, you may notice there's a whole bunch of different types of thumbnails and thumbnail styles out there. However, normally most gaming thumbnails out there will fit into one of these three categories. The first is a typography thumbnail. These are gonna be thumbnails with a background and just text. Now people spice it up a little bit and make the text look really cool or give it a nice angle or use different types of fonts and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just a background and text. Second is what we call a magazine thumbnail. So these are thumbnails that have an image, but they also have text up on the screen to emphasize that image or explain their point or entice the viewer. Kind of similar to how a magazine will like show this superstar or this celebrity, but then they'll also add captions to give you a bit of clarity or entice you or make you ask a question. The final thumbnail I call it just a clean thumbnail. So this is generally a spiced up screenshot of just like an in-game image or something really, really simple. Now these clean thumbnails can take a long time to make. In fact, a lot of the big creators have what looks like a clean thumbnail, but they've actually completely created that scene from scratch in Photoshop or Illustrator. But nevertheless, even if a lot of editing time does go into them, generally they come out looking a bit cleaner than the magazine or typography thumbnails. Whatever type of thumbnail you end up going for, if other big YouTubers in your niche are using a similar style, it's not a bad option. However, going back to my original point, once you've decided on your thumbnail style, we need to look into making that style of thumbnail still clickable because there are plenty of typography thumbnails out there, magazine thumbnails or clean thumbnails that fit into these categories, but they're still just bad thumbnails. They're not interesting and people won't click on them. So what makes a good thumbnail? The best kind of thumbnails are thumbnails that tell a story or leave a question unanswered. The best type of thumbnails though, do both. They tell a story and they leave a question. 
So let's have a look at Red Arcade. Red Arcade are really good at doing these kind of things. We can see this thumbnail has obviously been made by them from scratch. There's no way they could have gotten a screenshot of this in game. So this is a, an example of a clean thumbnail that would have taken a lot of effort to create. They're telling a story. Obviously this female character is hanging off this male character's beard. Kind of outrageous, interesting story that you might be interested in learning more about. How did this happen? What is going on here? How did we get to this point in time? But it's also asking a question. They've kind of left us on this literally cliffhanger moment. So what happens to the girl? Does she fall to her death? What happens to the guy? Does he fall down with her or does he survive? Let's have a look at another example of a good thumbnail. So over here we can see a video from Star Wars Battlefront 2 and these are a bunch of heavy troopers all with their shields activated charging towards the enemy. And this is kind of a rare sight. This thumbnail tells a story and asks a question. First of all it tells the story, a whole bunch of players activating their shields and all charging at the enemy at once. That's a story that people might be interested in, how did we get to that point? And secondly, kind of asks a question, so what happens to them? Did they all get blown up by a grenade or did they decimate the enemy who couldn't destroy them? What actually happened? Here's another example of a thumbnail. However, this video from the same channel, but this video was half as successful as the previous one we looked at. Why is that? Well, this thumbnail asks a question, like why is Anakin Skywalker smiling in a weird, creepy way? But it doesn't really tell a story. If someone decides to write an epic tale about smiling, they're probably not gonna sell many copies. So I could go on showing different examples and explaining thumbnails and breaking them down, but like I said, I'm under a bit of time pressure, so hopefully this was enough for you guys. In a nutshell, try and make thumbnails that tell a story and leave a question. Next when making your thumbnails, you wanna use bright colors. So little tip, yellow is the first color perceived by the human eye. That's why a lot of popular gaming videos use that yellowy gold text in their thumbnails. Another tip, thumbnails with light blue backgrounds tend to do really well. I don't know why this is, and I don't know if any studies have been done on this subject for YouTube, but I definitely know for Instagram studies were done and photos on Instagram that have more light blue in them, so for example, ocean or sky shots, were more successful than those that didn't. It's one of those things that I've found has worked great for me. Give it a go and see if it works for you. The next tip is for those of you who are using magazine or typography style thumbnails. Don't use the same words in your thumbnail as you did in the title. For example, if you're making a video about how to find Fort Byte 82, you're probably gonna have those words in the title of your video. So you could also have them in the thumbnail, but there's not much point in doubling up. Instead, have the title that says how to find Fort Byte 82 and then on the thumbnail you could have words like we found it or hidden location or whatever. If you're making a video about how to quickscope in Call of Duty and you're using the phrase how to quickscope in Call of Duty in your title, you probably want to put something a bit different in your thumbnail. So learn to quickscope fast or begin a tutorial on quickscoping or whatever it is. But try and keep your thumbnail wording and your title wording different. My next tip is make sure your text stands out. Just because you have text there doesn't mean that it stands out and people are actually able to read it. Spend some time on Photoshop or whatever program you're using, adding shadows, adding strokes, playing with angles, playing with gradients and colors, and making sure your text really pops out so that people can read it. My final tip is YouTube Cloud Vision. So YouTube can actually recognize what is in your thumbnails. Now this can be a big issue for us sometimes, that we might be posting a video that doesn't have any inappropriate content, but YouTube might pick up inappropriate content somehow. Obviously Cloud Vision is still a robot, it's an algorithm, whatever it is, it can make mistakes. The good news is YouTube Cloud Vision is free to test, so you can put your thumbnail through it and make sure that it's not ringing any YouTube alarm bells. Come to this website, once you've uploaded your thumbnail you can just go through these steps and at the end you should have a good understanding of what YouTube thinks of your thumbnail. My next tip is try and make sure your thumbnails are relevant. Because we're gaming creators, try and find something in your video game that is new, exciting or relevant to feature in your thumbnail. Something that someone who hasn't played the game for a couple of weeks might see and go, oh that interests me, I'll check it out. Earlier we looked at a thumbnail from Lachlan about the new tactical AR in Fortnite. If Lachlan had made a similar video about the golden scar, it wouldn't have nearly as many views because the scar has been out for years. If you can't find anything in the game that is relevant, sometimes you can use external factors. Sometimes you can use external factors to keep your videos relevant. Basing your videos around certain real life events are great, such as Christmas, Easter, Halloween, etc. This is commonly called tentpole programming. The more relevant or trending the topics in your thumbnail are, the more interest it will pique within your viewers. So I hope this video really helped you out. When I was first starting, I had no idea what I was doing and I drastically underestimated how important thumbnails are. If you have a friend who's an aspiring YouTuber, feel free to send this video to them because I'm sure they'd appreciate you thinking of them. And if they don't know about the importance of thumbnails, then their channel is going to be dead as a doornail. The video I mentioned will be up on screen right now, so feel free to watch that. I'd highly recommend it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.